So I am going to be doing molding today and I thought I would show you how I mold from an object. I have a 3D printer. I am very lucky that I have a 3D printer and this is a propeller that I printed and it printed a full propeller and I when I'm working with my artworks I would like things that are flat backed because there's very little object space for me to actually glue here and it's often too deep so I only needed half the object so how I create my molds is I use so I've just bought this modeling clay it's a small packet of modeling clay here in Berlin and in Europe there's a shop called Action it's um, a shop where you can get quite cheap things they have quite a big craft aisle uh, which I frequent so I bought this clay there it's traditional like artists uh, pottery clay in South Africa I just used to buy potter's clay and so I made quite a deep block of potter's clay and squished it in in fact you can still see the clay in the grooves of the print and then I built up the sides and for this one I used cardboard just um, I think it was even that foam core because I can see it's quite thick so I, I built up a, a, yeah, layers today I'm going to be using Morning, Olga's in the house, Michael Jamison, Inga. So today I'm going to be using my son's old Duplo Lego, which I borrowed to use to make molds and never returned. He's now 15, so he doesn't need it anymore, so it's fine. And so this is what the mold looks like. So this is the part that would have been against the clay. So this is what your mold looks like while it's actually being created. We're going to... I'm going to see if I can make one and put it on one side. This was a South African brand, uh, AMT. It's actually Smoothcast, which is an international brand, but AMT Composites is in all the big cities in South Africa, and they import Smoothcast and sell it under their own label. If you scroll down my YouTube channel, you will find from three years ago mold making and pouring videos that I did so that was and then this is what comes out sorry of this particular mold so that you get a nice flat back enjoy your first day back at school my son's off to school for the first time they are splitting school here so they uh, have been half so he's in grade 10 so they've got I don't know how many grade 10 classes some went this morning for three hours and he's off for his three hours this afternoon so that they can split the kids and they can't they're not um, too many kids on campus so nerve-wracking for a mom to send your child out into the world but uh, I suppose life has to start slowly happening somehow right so this is what my mold looks like and I have now a nice flat back to be able to glue onto objects so that's uh, I didn't squish it quite half but at least I have a flat back then the other thing so when I'm doing molds I normally find things at so this is a key that I found that I purchased at a vintage market it's I'd love to know what door this opened it's heavy and it's solid and it's huge it must have been a huge door and this is the mold that I have made from it again same process pushing it into the clay I've just sprayed it with copper spray paint you can use old buttons vintage buttons with beautiful this looks like one that should be on an Aaron jersey again I have found keys that but the trick with this is that you have to block that hole so I normally take a little piece of clay and I fill that hole and I fill that hole because otherwise when you pour the silicone on top to make your mold it flows in to your key and that is a bit of a pest so it's better if you actually block it off before you make your mold so those are some other things then these are the kitties DIY straws and you can either use them on your projects whole but quite often I either want to bend them or I want 
I, again, I prefer a flat object that I can glue easier. So you again fill there. You can just use some of the potter's clay, fill it up, fill that gap up. You can build a whole frame, for example. You can build a whole shape and mold it. I did individuals here I've built one so I found some kitties straws that were slightly fatter so you can see these are the skinny ones which were those and then those which I've since used on a project as whole straws so I don't have them anymore to show you so there were the fatter straws that I pushed in and here were the skinnier straws which are pushed in so I pushed them in to about half again having blocked the end so that the mold doesn't get full or your object yeah, I didn't do such a great job of blocking it off, but it still works as a mold. That's how I created those. So let's go with actually creating a mold. You need gloves, you need an apron, and you need to not have long sleeves on. I once decided before rushing off to my studio in Cape Town to quickly run some molds that I was needing for a class that I was teaching that weekend, and I um was still in my dressing gown oh this is another one that i've created uh, this is 3d printed and then that's the mold that i have made from it so i quickly decided that i would uh, run some polyurethane into some molds and i dragged my sleeve through the liquid polyurethane and i didn't notice I have now got a hard chunk on my sleeve because you can't get that stuff off. It's pure plastic. So, yes, we will have to meet soon. Hi, Renita. And Natalie. Yes. So, I used to teach these classes at Renita's shop, so it's so cool that you're watching. This is another mold that I made from a key that I bought. It was a set of three keys on a ring that um, I also found, I think it was at Milnerton Market. And I got my husband to grind the ring off it. Had, I think they were decor pieces. But again, I firstly this is heavy. So to stick this on your project, then it's gone. So I, and also this weighs nothing and I can heat it and I can mold it because this can then bend around your hats and so on or whatever it is that you're doing. So what I have done here is I have taken the artist's clay, the potter's clay. I rolled it out this morning so that you didn't have me and I just used a traditional, uh, what is this called? Rolling pin. And so I put the cling film wrap whatever you want to call this stuff saran wrap depending on where you are in the world this stuff that you normally put over your food in the kitchen I put that over it and I rolled it out so that I didn't dirty my rolling pin and today I am going to mold these things so these things I bought in Cape Town at Chinatown from the car there's a car um, parts shop where this stuff is and I think it people use it around computers and so on as well. It's it's for it's got a slit all the way down here. It's for containing cables. So it's for tidying up behind the dashboard. And it came in two thicknesses. You can see I've got a lot left of this, and this is all I've got left of that. Um, this is the skinny one. I used some of this on one of my eggs that is sitting in lockdown at Mitlieber, my Easter eggs. And what I have done is I took it it's normally round and of course it has this opening I slid my scissors in and I just chopped it in half because I don't again need the whole roll what I do need to do is just take some of this and make a little plug because I don't want it going inside so I'm going to just plug that side because I'm going to squish it into my into my clay there so I'm just gonna make little hi Jennifer I'm just gonna make little plugs
for the ends of these guys. And they're always guys. I don't know why my stuff always guys. They're not girls, they're all guys. And I'm just... So, that one's ready. Just a few more to go. This is a big one. And so I'm just building the flat end. I've also used uh, that poster putty, tic tac stuff, blue tack. I don't know what else it's called in the rest of the world. Um, when I was making my other ends. Thanks, Olga. <laughs> Olga's being a mod for my a mod moderator for my Facebook page. That's so cool. <laughs> yes, you can hear the coffee. I hope he does too. He hasn't asked. Maybe I should say yes, please. I could do with another cup. Okay. The crazy thing is my studio is round the corner from the kitchen so it's an open plan kitchen into our lounge dining area and I've blocked off a section of the dining of the lounge for my studio with um, cupboards and in if you know the IKEA products it's the Calyx units and revision class Nubby yes revision class so I the crazy thing is all the smells somehow come round and into my studio and make me starving hungry if the family are cooking stuff like my son likes to make um fry some chicken or something because of course he's been home for four weeks he likes to fry chicken and stuff while i'm busy here and man it makes me so hungry and yeah then He's eaten it and an hour later, I can still smell it in my studio and he's the food's long gone. The rest of the smell felt flat, smells fine, but my studio still smells like fried chicken. So now that I've finished blocking off all of those, now when you buy uh, your silicone, I know in the smooth cast range, it comes with different so you get food grade, you get, so you can use it for icing and so on. You get uh, all sorts of different speeds at which it will dry and set and whatever. The pink one that I used to use here, used to set, I used to make it before I went to bed and I used to leave it to set overnight. This was, I took apart my printer to be, with it died and, well not, yeah, it broke and wasn't fixable and I took my whole printer apart and I got out as many of the cogs and gears as possible and this is one that I molded I think I used a lid of a spray can of some sort to as my base for that one right so now I need to see I'm gonna use these to squish in so I can place them so I'm just going to mark off on the clay where I'm going to be and oh, that's my clay is quite hard I've had it quite a while um, so I'm just going to mark off like so then I'm going to lay these in as straight as I can because of course they're not meant to be straight, they're just meant to hold cables and squish it into the clay. And the trick is to have your clay rolled out and as level as possible because it affects, so you will see it once you pour in. This is the side that is important that is level because if your, if your clay is like this, the top of your mold will be like that and then you don't get a nice finish so that is important that your clay is rolled out flat 
I think that is squished in evenly. I haven't cut that too, too evenly, so that I'm gonna get a bit of a wonky, a wonky mold, and just centering that. Because I'm making these straight because when I actually have the plastic in the mold, when I pour the polyurethane in, I can then heat these and make um, make them wiggly. So straighten that one out and push it in. Oh, that's my front door. That's interesting. And I didn't get coffee. <laughs> okay, so now I just have to push that back in and tidy that up. You can't really see it on the camera. It's gray on the gray. It's pushing itself out. So I'm just tidying that up with my nail and that has popped up behave stick don't mind me while I talk to inanimate objects Olga heard me talking to my cat the other day she said it, she couldn't see him but she could hear him she said it sounded sounded like she was watching one of those YouTube videos because my cat has conversations he does answer back. We always wish we actually knew what he was talking about. Okay, so we pop that one there and this one here and squish it into the clay and tight up against itself there and tight up against itself there. Squish it in, squish it in, squish it in. And on the side too squish and a squash and a squish and a squash right now that i've got that done i sometimes squish extra clay in there and in there just to help with leakage it doesn't leak too much we heard you making coffee Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hand coffee out. It's a pity, you guys. Can you imagine if the world was more like Harry Potter? <laughs> We'd be able to reach into each other's screens and help ourselves to stuff and pass things out. <laughs> that would be fun. Okay. So, right. Now. I'm going to be using, this is because I'm now living in Europe, I can order online and I'm using Troll Factory silicone and it should set, I think, in 20 minutes. I could be wrong, but anyway, so um, it says one minute, six to eight minutes, 40 minutes. It depends on the temperature, so 23 degrees, which it is in here, and I need a cup, paper cup, something you can throw away. Uh, sucker sticks, something you can throw away, and I use my, yay, that's my coffee, I've got a little tiny scale, believe me, whatever scale you use, do not borrow one from the kitchen and think it will return, because it will never look the same again, so you need it on zero, and this is one to one, some of the different brands, so the, the pink version that I used came in a one litre bucket and a tiny little bottle, so it was for argument's sake you would put in a hundred grams of the silicone and then you would put in 10 grams of the activator always read what your instructions say so this one is one to one and it's a brand new set i just need to check that there's no sealant on there no um all right but that is still closed okay so i knew there was something i still had to do screw that on well and tight open that chop its nose off 
There we go. Chop that one's nose off. There we go. So I do one at a time. The blue one is quick. Yeah, I'm not sure. Andrew, my husband, did the ordering of this. So I'm going to go for... Because I need decent coverage here. Um, probably going to put in about 30 grams of this one. I can always mix more. And put on top if I'm quick enough. Okay. So that's 30 grams of that guy. And we'll put in 30 grams of this one. Thanks, Olga. Olga's going to add the link for those of you in Europe that want... Um, this it's I think it's from Amazon okay so I put in 30 grams of that so I need to get this up to 60 grams and don't overdo it while I'm talking you can also use measuring cups if you don't have a scale you can use little measuring cups like this and use one to one Thank you. Coffee served, people. Chin chin. Cheers. Okay, I'm putting that well out the way. You need to do this in a well ventilated area because there are fumes, it does say so. And now you give it a good old mix. Don't forget to scrape the sides and work your stick right down to the bottom into all the corners. If you can do figures of eight also helps round and round. Just make sure that it looks well mixed and that there are no streaks. I'll just pop the link into Amazon um, in the chat for those of you who need it. Morning Danielle. I just love the name Troll Factory, especially as on online you have those awful trolls that always have something to say and cause nonsense. Right, so now that that is mixed, I like to tap it and get rid of all the air bubbles. I'm just going to grab some roller towel. Traditionally, roller towel is white. It's not in my studio. So I'm just going to clean that off. And what I do is I tap it like this to get all the bubbles to rise to the top in the jar. Because I can't really tap this. Not too many bubbles coming up anymore. And then you pour. And that probably was a little bit too much for this mold, but I'd rather have a fatter mold than a skinny mold. And just remember to check that your desk is actually straight before you do this. This flat floor is vastly off kilter. So when we put my desk in, we had to wedge some wood underneath the one side of my desk so that the desk was actually flat. Because this stuff will self-level. So if your floor is skew and therefore your table is skew, it's going to self-level skew. I'm just going to bang underneath my desk so you will get wobbly. Sorry. Um, can get These bubbles at this stage are not really a problem. 
but they're coming up off the because I've got so many ridges and things in there um, it can have little airlocks right so that's done what I have tried to do before is just because I've got it on a separate craft sheet lift it and tap but you've got to be careful doing this because it can affect your I can see a couple of bubbles coming up because this stuff is so full of ridges it can collect air bubbles when you are pouring the stuff on stupid Amazon translate for Polish is your computer's Polish and detects languages but it's from the German Amazon <laughs> yes I have that too mine mine translates yes to English from German but often things are in German so yes if you just look up troll factory or um, you you should find it on your Amazon I can still see some bubbles coming up from where these things were so it's a good idea to work if you can work on a separate board or like I'm working on a sheet if your clay is very soft doing what I'm doing on the sheet will make everything bend so just yeah be careful Right, I'm going to put that on one side. So that's how you make a mold. And in theory, in 20 minutes, or it depends on the flat, so in 6 to 8 minutes or 40 minutes, I should have a mold that I can use. It's quite crazy. So I'm just going to leave that over there and pop this on one side of my desk. Because now I'm going to just put another protection. This is also a silicone mat. Um, it's the cooking one it's not the crafting one but it's absolutely identical it's what I used to use um, for my classes when I lent them to my students so that I knew which were mine mm. just having some coffee right time to get out molds okay now about molds there are lots of different molds out there I'm currently obsessed with these by Stamperia and these are plastic molds my understanding and I could be completely wrong but my understanding of how these molds are made is it's a flat piece of plastic with a double shape so it's a bit like an embossing folder for those of you who are crafters with an innie and an outie and the plastic goes in between and the machine heats it and squishes it like that so um, which is fine if you're going to be putting clay in so you get paper clay you get uh, air drying clay and the one that I currently is Stamperia does do their own clay but this is all I have for now Stamperia I'm going to be getting more stuff by Stamperia but so this is the do and dry clay that I've bought at Midleba and um, also if you google Midleba Midleba will have they've now got an online shop due to this coronavirus nonsense um, and I wonder, you know, these videos I'm putting on on YouTube. So in a couple of years time, when people are watching them, they're going to wonder if they weren't like, yeah, if they weren't, I don't know where somebody would be that wouldn't know about coronavirus. But yeah, so I just was thinking. So this, I will show how to use this shortly. So it's uh, a clay that you can squish in and pull out straight away and then um, you can mold it around objects what I do find is that these molds are not flat apparently they used to have a frame that you could put them in the thing is that these objects are at different heights so it doesn't sit flat so what I do is I take little chunks of wood you can use sucker sticks whatever just to build up and support your your uh, molds i have so this is the the one that's come out of here the other thing that i do these molds are quite deep and i like it quite shallow so i just don't fill the mold completely and this is my alice mold also by stamperia 
and this is how I've used it. That's the Wonderland, and there's the rabbit, and here's the drink me that I have used for this project of Alice. And then, of course, we have wings. And here you can see what I, I was trying to explain earlier. So because the plastic has gone through the squishing process and it's being molded, plastic will get thicker and thinner. And what has happened here is somewhere probably over here, there is a tiny little hole. And because we're pouring liquid into it, of course, it leaks out. If you're just using clay, that's really not a problem. So I have left this on where it has leaked out. I then had to, because quite a bit leaked out, I then had to top it up. So I left my mold sitting and I then topped up that particular wing. So I've left what I call the plug on the back of that one. And I'm going to pour another seahorse, I think, because he is the fastest one to set. So I'm going to just get my supports in here. These are out of the back of the canvas. I'm popping those in there so that I know it is relatively flat. And now, so I've got that ready. And I always have some, well, this has lots of spaces for me to fill. And again, that is tipping down over there. So if I decide I want to fill that up over there, it's all going to be at an angle. So I'm just going to stick some extra sticks under here. Might be a bit high. But once you've got the weight of this stuff in, it does help to settle it. But this, yeah, the mold is right. Back to here, and I need another cup. These I reuse, so these were little samples. The kids were all um, given these at school back in South Africa, and my son collected a whole lot of them for me and brought them home, and I'm still using them. So this is my two-minute resin. I know that Stamperia has their own resin. It does settle, this particular one, so you have to mix it. I'm not touching my silicone for quite a while. It's very tempting to want to see and then you poke your finger in it and it sticks to your finger. Yes, it's very, very tempting. Thanks for the link to Mitliba. Okay, so that is all mixed. Yes, so I have put little little things underneath there. What I might actually do is build myself a little frame to set this into. Apparently, yes, they used to have these frames, but um, somebody suggested sand to push it into, but I don't, oh, I don't know, on my desk, that's not going to work well for me. So I might design a little frame thing, build myself a little frame. Um, yeah. So again, one-to-one, one, so you could use these little cups, one-to-one. One. I go by weight, and I know that I did 30 grams yesterday to do this guy, and I got three little gears out as well. So don't mix your lids up, people. I take them off one at a time. I've also taken a red cookie and put a red dot on that one, so that I don't mix my lids. And I'm going to do, oh, I've made 17. Okay, I'm going to go up to 20 for this one. And so that means I'm going to go up to 40. And slowly does it. Right. Always close your bottles afterwards. Morning, Mom. We call it resin. It's polyurethane. Well, I call it, yeah. It says resin. This is the two-minute resin. And we 
The last time it came, it was cream. This time it is white. It comes in cream or white. And when your molds are done, to prepare them for painting, you can. I like to cover them in white gesso, uh, clear gesso. The clear has a nice tooth to it. Um, if you've only got white gesso or black gesso, it really doesn't matter. Right. So now that I've mixed it, I squish my jar and I'm fill and you'll feel it start getting hot straight away in in your hand and that's what happens so it is a chemical process that is the setting of this so the chemical process gets hot so the bigger your mold and in fact now I'm gonna do what shall I do I can do just his little face So the thinner your object, the longer it's going to take to set. I'm going to do this one. So it seems quite crazy and counterintuitive that you would think that the smaller thing would be, maybe I'll try and see, maybe I can have some legs. I'll just pour a leg. Okay, I'm getting two legs. And I'm getting part of another leg. Maybe I'll just pull this bottom part. And as your stuff starts to set in your pot, it becomes a little bit easier to control. So maybe... Yeah. And I'm going to just pull some of that back. So as it starts to set, you have a little bit of play time. There it's already starting to set. So that's where it's the thickest. You can see where it's really thin it's going to take even longer to set and I'm just gonna try and clean up a little bit around here you can use scissors afterwards to cut off the excess I'm just trying to make it thinner on this side okay you can see it's starting to set there, so my playtime is over. And where it's thicker here, you can see the middle of the gears are starting to go. And let's see how... Dare I poke it? Touch? Nah! Look at that. It's still, still got ages. Ages and ages and ages. That's going to take a while. I will leave it well alone. <laughs> Right, so he's almost set, his nose still has to set, and the edges of his little fin, these little tips. So when you have a mold like this, which I know has very thin things in there, your center is going to go first, and you can't actually see what it's doing here. Of course, it's open, it's flat, it's big. You can see what it's doing. You've got to resist the temptation with a mold like this to start popping it out or you will mangle it because that won't be set in those thin bits. So resist the temptation to take these guys out too soon. While we are waiting for that to set... Um, I'm going to drink some coffee and discuss what is next for me to discuss now. These guys. So they have also Stamperia. They have these little guys and these are just, so these are individual objects. Much like these, but they're much flatter. So that works in exactly the same way. And of course, because they're flatter, they're going to take quite a while to set with this process. Then you have these molds, which are, um, 
Oh, I flipped the words, just gone right out of my head. Uh, they are texture molds. And you can pour this stuff on it. Again, it needs to be sitting nice and flat on your desk. Here is one of, so this says, there's nothing like a dream to create the future and the word steampunk. And here is this part of the mold. I poured the whole mold and I cut off pieces because this is so thin in between. I just used my scissors and I cut it out. It is preferable to do that when the mold is still soft and it's just come out or, or just come off here because I find it gets quite brittle and if you try and cut it at this stage I can it does sometimes snap so if you want to do that at a later stage I suggest heating it with a heat gun this not this heating this with a heat gun to be able to soften it to be able to cut it so you can use just pieces of this you don't have to use the whole thing and this is another one that I've got, which is also by Stamperia, and it has this lovely corset in the middle. And you can use your glamour paste. So any of these pastes work really, really well in these. And I used some of my gold paste in this one. The trick is to put it on quite thick. So it sinks down as it dries. So you don't really want to be seeing any of your mold when you spread it on. I'm not going to, oh, maybe I will do it. If this is set, yeah, I will do this. But the, the, this takes 12, I call it a whole day. I do it today for tomorrow. This is, when you're working with these pastes, this is not instant. Whereas when you are, oh, Sharon, I know it's, um, I know that Jennifer has got the Alice mold and this one with the wings. I'm not sure where she bought it from in South Africa. I know Trocraft are importing Stamperia. So perhaps when this whole silly lockdown mess is over, contact Trocraft and see who they are supplying. Um, so, okay, so you want to see how I do this. Okay, yes, it takes ages with paste. So I won't be able to pull um, my paste one out straight away. But again, because the paste is really nice and soft, you can sit and cut this out either with a pair of scissors or a craft knife or whatever. So I have also done it using... So then what happened? I was impatient and I hadn't waited for this to dry completely and it left a little bit of the gold in the mold and then I just poured my polyurethane on top and it pulled the gold out with it so which doesn't really matter because I'm going to be painting it anyway I never use these ones just as they are whereas this I will use as is so and then here's one that I poured and again I just poured a select piece again you don't have to pour the whole thing so I will do that just now. In the meantime, I want to take this out. And this that is still really squishy. Squish, squash, stretch. Okay, so this is what I mean. At this stage, this is really, really squishy. And yeah, there is a Canadian store. Um, no, Medlibo doesn't know the South African spot. So I'm saying both because I have a lot of people watching from South Africa. And I know that Trocraft are importing to South Africa. And uh, if I go on, on my YouTube live from Saturday, Nikki, Nikki has an Etsy shop. The Disorganized Crafter. And I know that she, she was putting links on. So there are places in the States to be able to buy. I'm afraid I don't know for Peru. <laughs> so at this stage, I'm tidying it up while it is still soft. You can use a bit of sandpaper later just to get rid of the harsh edges where my scissors have. So it's that easy. Then I'm going to pull out his legs. They will still be quite soft at this stage. 
So I'll be able to use that. And again, here where I've dripped, I'm just going to pull that off because it's much easier to do your trimming now than later. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, I can use that as a piece of an octopus coming out of something. I'll put that on one side to set. Um, I'm not sure if Jennifer, oh, Jennifer, contact me. Sharon will give info. Thanks, Jennifer, for putting for putting that out there. And this is now set. It's still warm. It's still really, really warm. And so at this stage, once I've taken it out, I can bend him. So for my, if I'm doing a hat or if I'm doing an object, where it is thickest, it's going to be the hardest to bend. But I can actually bend him like so. And you've got to sit patiently and hold him while he cools. Otherwise, what happens is the nature of it is it will flatten itself out again. You can use a heat gun to... <laughs> no, I'm not poking it. It was so unset just now. Um, so you can use a heat gun and heat this up and bend it later. But um, I, if, if I know what I'm going to be using it for, so at this stage I'm going to just keep him flat because I don't know what I'll be using him on. But like when I was preparing for the hat, I sat like the boy with a finger in the dike. My Dutch friends will understand that. Um, and I, I sat holding the mold in its curved position for ages. It felt like flipping forever. I sat watching, playing catch up on the YouTube lives um, from other things that I had missed during the week. I'm three Tim Holtz lives behind. Um, yes. So anyway, that's how we roll. So that is that. And make sure, as I keep saying, work in a well-ventilated area because these fumes are not the greatest. And you'll see I'm working with gloves. Um, right, let's make... Which one shall I make? Um, shall I have blue steampunk and blue wording? Or shall I go for a blue dress? I have a gold dress. Maybe we should have a blue dress. Mm. Okay, which one shall I do? I don't feel like making decisions. Uh, corset or train? Last Tim's life was three hours. <laughs> he admits to making coloring books as a kid. Oh, my soul. Oh, he's a scream. Okay. Should you feel guilty needing that mold? No, definitely not. Replying to Olga. Uh, yes. No, don't feel guilty. We all need these things. Train. Okay, Olga says train. Train, says Sandra. Fine, train it is. Okay, so I'm going to open my glamour paste. This comes with a cover and oh it's so glittery Olga it's delicious you would love it Olga's like a magpie she likes anything shiny right I'm gonna use my fat spatula obviously I'm gonna want my train and I like the word steampunk and uh, I might just use the whole thing so what you do is you take out a whole lot and it's like Spreading butter on bread. Or peanut butter more likely. You want you want quite a generous amount. So what I meant earlier was so you take it and you push it in to your mold. And initially what I do is I kind of scrape it so I can see where air bubbles are. So you can you can just do it like that then you will just get the object 
and it's gonna just give you the wording but you can see the bubbles there where it hasn't actually filled filled everything so I'm just making sure that I am filling all the gaps and again what I also do is Slap it to get those air bubbles up to the top. So at this stage, I'm just squishing it in there. It does use quite a lot of your paste, but it really is just so shiny and delicious. Whoops. I'm supposed to be putting it in and my spatula is taking it out. Um, trying to get, I can see those dark holes means that that's an air bubble. Guten Tag. Good day to you, Mary. Yeah, unfortunately with this lockdown, my German has gone. My little German that I had is not the greatest. And it was hilarious. Yesterday I went to the pharmacy for my husband because he's got a bit of a cold. And I wanted this, uh, what I would pronounce, bronchi, right? And so I asked the pharmacist for bronchi pret and he looked at me funny and said, sorry. And so I repeated it and I said, it's a cough mixture, bronchi pret. Oh, bronchi, bronchi pret, like chief, like anyway, it was hilarious. So I said, I'm sorry, my pronunciation isn't the greatest. And he laughed and agreed, but I try. And um, yeah, the problem is if you don't use something, you lose it. And my dear neighbor upstairs, who I used to go to every Thursday for German lessons, she's so sweet. Um, I'd print something off the internet and she'd help me with it and try and get it into my thick skull. Because, oh my word, all the verbs, um, if you're using I then you have to add an E on it, so, an ich. so then you have to add an E onto the end of the verb and if it's do, which is you, then it's ist on the end of the verb and it's just so flipping complicated. My nearly 50 year old brain doesn't want to. Right, so now I've got that all in. I'm going to So it's going to sink in. It's going to, it, it, as it dries, as the moisture evaporates out of this, it's going to uh, sink in. And I'm just going to now spread it like peanut butter over the top. And then this will have to sit till literally this time tomorrow. I'm really enjoying Germany. Berlin is an amazing city. And um, we've been here a year. It's hard to believe it's gone so quickly. I'm just trying to fill in everything because if you don't put enough on it looks like you are putting tons on like like you're totally overloading it but believe me when it dries you'll wonder to yourself did I put any on at all So this is the kind of thing you can't do and use immediately. So it does mean that you have to plan your project ahead of time, which sometimes, 
how do we know what we're going to be doing ahead of time we don't always so yeah using this stuff definitely means you have to plan you have to be a bit of an organized crafter and I'm just trying to get it as even as possible on the back that's just me I can see I need a little bit more over here on this edge because as I discovered now where's it gone with this one the thinner it is the harder it is to peel off it wants to break So you need it as thick as possible everywhere. Got to go to work. Bye. Well, you'll be able to watch the replay. I'm not doing much after this. I have an online. Yes, I've got all sorts of apps. But um, I've been doing so many lives that the apps have gone out the window because all these lives take a lot of preparation and behind the scenes work and then clearing up afterwards and then so i've basically been doing five lives a week so i've been doing monday tuesday crafting wednesday is my shopping day thursday friday i've been doing art saturday i've been doing youtube this coming week i'm not doing a saturday live my youtube i'm part of a youtube hop um and that is a pre-recorded video mine's only six minutes long and it's a double page spread it's as part of the scrapbooking hop so that will go live on friday okay so that that is thick and i'm just going to check on that side that i haven't got that i've got in everywhere i can see in my lettering in the word steampunk that i've got a whole lot of holes so I wonder if I can squish it a little bit more in that area. And I wonder, let's just check it again. Bottom of the N, top of the S, oh my word, it's all full of holes. It's quite tricky to get into. Where's my S gone? Oh, there it is. Just trying to get it into all those little tiny things and I think my K was also a bit dodgy right let's check it again yes I always save my lives and then I also save them to my YouTube channel just so that you can find them again because otherwise these lives disappear down your stream and then they're gone so I will save it to my YouTube channel as well so if you Google Belinda Bassano Acorn Crafts on YouTube, you will find it. Okay, let's tidy that up again. Okay, let's just see how we're we doing. One last check, that looks a whole lot better. It's still not perfect. Um, and I'm sure in these letters I've got a whole lot of issues. So I'm just going to try and see if doing this helps at all. No idea if that'll help. Can I link to my YouTube? Yeah, I will. I don't think that has made any difference at all. So it is what it is. You just get what you get. Okay, so that now has to dry. I'm just going to tidy this lot up in my jaw just tidying the inside of my jaw for future use and does it get
again if you have too much so i'm trying to get all my stuff down into the bottom <laughs> and then i'll put my cover back on it just that just helps it to because this stops excess air getting in i mean there is now air in the jar i can't help that because i've been using it and roll it home time to poke my silicone and see if it's ready ha it's ready people it's ready okay let's stick this on one side and bring this one back moment of truth so i'm just gonna peel my clay off and peel my Ta-da! Oh, that worked perfectly. Yay! Oh, just a little... Come off! <laughs> there we go. And now... There's my mold. Okay, this one leaked a little bit underneath. And inside that's not too detrimental perfect let's see what that comes out like people let's give it a test run I suppose you could put a small layer on the back and then put paper clay on you know it's I pay I play the what if game all the time so how do I know how things will work well I try them so give it a go and Sandra and see if it works and report back okay so now we're gonna make this one and I need that and I need that and I'm gonna give this one a shake And I'm probably only going to need about, mm, I'm going to do 10 of each. So I'm going to do 20 grams. Um, don't forget to put your lid on. I'm going to do 20 grams because if I need more, I can always mix more, but... Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Off. On one side. Grab the stick. Give it a mix. Mixing is important. Make sure you mix long enough. Don't mix too long because obviously it'll start to set in the thing. And I'm going to just create a new spot on this side and pour. And I'm messing because my spot that I created wasn't the greatest. Okay, we'll make another one over there. Okay, so now I have excess left over in here. Let's make something waste not, want not. What shall I make? I can make a heart. I can make a crown. I will make a crown. I think I've got enough in here to make a crown. And 
what have I got? Enough to maybe make a keyhole. I often do little bits of a mold. I don't necessarily... I then can add them into my textures. So because these are thin, they're going to take a little while to set and they will th those two will go first and um, set in the middle and then in the grooves because of course the grooves are quite fine so those are going to be the last to set. So again you can't be too impatient to pull this out. Okay so I'm not weird that makes me feel better. No I'll go live. Am I weird feeling positive? Positive from silicone is oddly satisfying. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's very satisfying. Sorry you missed this start approval. You can catch the replay because I'll be as soon as these set. In fact, this one's setting because it was longer in there. And it's so as soon as these are set, then I'm done for today. So you can just watch the replay. So basically, I make my own molds from things that I find around the house, textures and things that, um, yeah, like buttons and keys and what else have I got on my desk that I haven't showed you yet? I think I've shown you everything. Um, I work on an old mat on top of my mat because like here, this um, sometimes these drip when you're pouring. There goes those ones. Those ones are starting to set. Um, so and it's just it destroyed this mat so this is i keep as my destroyed mat this one's almost done that one's still setting and that one is spread out far more than i anticipated but anyway it will be fine <clears throat> i will be adding it as a texture on top to a top of something so yes approver we've just made this mold using Trollcraft silicone and while I've been doing other things this mold has set and I pulled these things out and now I'm busy putting polyurethane I call it polyurethane it's uh, resin people here call it resin and we are done hurry up and set <laughs> I want to pull you out there it's starting to go I'm like a child at Christmas. It's exciting. I want to pull it out. Come on, set, 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 set. So here in Europe, the houses have central heating. So even in winter, the houses are not that cold. The struggle was real in South Africa where I was trying to make molds for molded items for a class I was running in winter. And the skinny molds like this just wouldn't set because my house wasn't warm enough. So as these said, it needs to be 23 degrees or more um, in temperature for the pot, the resin to, to work. So, yeah, this one I could pull out already. It's hot, 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 hot. I'll leave it to cool for a little bit. But... Yeah, so these are still setting. So I can see along the edges where those little grooves are that it's um, it's still taking its time to set. So it will start setting where the biggest volume is um, because there's the most chemical reaction taking place. Hi Natalie, you can. I'm done for today. Just about. We're just watching resin set. So last week during my lives we were watching paint dry. Today we're watching resin set. And there's still this guy over here which is going to take from... I will probably peel this off this time tomorrow. In fact I'll do that during tomorrow's live. From next week I'm only going to do two lives a week. Because um, my household, my family life is taking strain... So I'll be doing Tuesdays and Thursdays next week. And if I'm invited to go along on Saturdays, I'll do Saturdays. Your resin takes 24 hours to cure. Oh my soul, that would kill me. Hi, Christiana. You're taking a tea break. Um, 
yeah it's quite cool so yeah so from next week i'm only going to be doing tuesdays will be crafts thursdays will be art and if necessary if i need to finish something the next day then i will do that but um yeah my family needs the washing done and the flat clean the dust bunnies going down my passage yesterday could have eaten my foot they were so big so yes we can't have that it doesn't matter at the moment there are no visitors but still i i still like a clean flat and you can literally write your name on my shelves in the dust how how with all the windows and doors closed how are things still dusty mind you we've got a lot of building nearby but still the windows and doors are closed yeah i will pop it on my youtube as usual and yes it'll be on facebook um if you scroll down hi sharon so yes we're done this is still setting and yep these are still setting let's see if i can be impatient no it's still too tacky but i can take this one out this one's ready Ta -da! and then this piece because you can see how soft that is this is still like stretchy um i just wanted the keyhole that's still actually quite sticky here we go let's just see can i get that one out yes yay ta-da So there we have it. And now, of course, I can make this. So if I wanted that to go around there while this is still soft, I would actually, I quite often just sticky masking tape this to something because if I take it off and I leave it like this, as you can see, it's going to want to try and straighten itself out. So if you need it to hold its shape, you need to either sit and hold it or sticky tape it to something and hold it so there we go now now it doesn't want to go back to being flat there's that one and i think let's just see if this one will pop out almost almost done the ends are still sticking let's get this one out Ta -da! You can of course leave it i'm just being impatient because i want to see um but you can leave it in there till it's absolutely solid solid and um it will come out really easily so that's it for today you need to go to bed <laughs> sorry it's done you can go to bed now okay guys that was fun that was awesome i will see you tomorrow I have no idea what i'm doing yet i'm gonna spin the wheel Cheers, guys. Bye.